power sculptures you can see in here, I started around, I think it was about 2009. Uh, just one day I just started picking up some, you know, like threaded rods and joining them together and then it, it turned into a whole group of work, you know, making artwork. When I got to China, you know, from, from America, it seemed very chaotic, very energetic. Lots of things being built, everything going in the air, sort of uncontrolled, unregulated airspace, uncoded building practices, all this stuff. And this is sort of like my sculptural reaction to that experience from science fiction to brutalist architecture to other important sculptural works throughout the last hundred years. This group of artwork is called the uh, London Apprentices. Each weekend I would go and get a lump of stainless steel and these things kind of ended up as uh, somewhere in between sort of tools, objet d'art, medieval object. And then I went on to uh, make these cabinets that hold them in this sort of like micro museum. And it's, so it's like each week I would make one, so it was like eight weeks. Mostly, you know, using like my bare hands, so they're kind of uh, odd, crude, a little bit strange. I didn't make drawings beforehand, so I, I would just kind of get something and then do something with it, a little bit like how ancient tools and things like that were made. So for instance, this crowbar, I, you know, started with a long bar, bent it, spayed it, split it, you know, using sort of like blacksmithing techniques that I've learned a sledgehammer with an anvil, so it was like tools make tools. For me that's a sort of reference about the technology industry or say the military industrial complex, things like that. You have a cell phone, behind it is this armada of factories that are invisible. Me being from London and this name actually being the name of a pub that I was taken to frequently as a child and have been to since in West London. So the London apprentices were during the Civil War in England and they, you know, they fought against the king. Um, so me being from that place, these are kind of my attempts at apprenticeship of an idea. Um, and these people in history, they then went on to sort of become the levelers and the diggers and these other kinds of uh, anti-authoritarian groups that some of my other work is attached to, like sound system. So these drawings, well, when I'm not metal bashing or wiring or staring at the computer, the other thing that I really like to do is uh, drawings. And, you know, some are quite large. They're, like, sprawling, very intense, hatched. They look almost old-fashioned. Other ones are faster proposals, ridiculous impossibilities. This particular group here, they're more like intensely worked sort of uh, illustrations. The carcass of a uh, Western industrial architecture, you know, vaulted brick ceilings, chimneys, things like that. For me, that, that Western architectural monolith started to fall apart and then I started thinking more about the stuff I could see in China, which was uh, something very new to me, the sort of chaotic other approach that people have there to do things, to make things work, to break things, to repair things. So these are like part imagination, part things that I've seen. You'd never see the vanishing point. Other ones use like a isometric plane, almost like a Chinese drawing. So there's no distance 
There's no foreground, everything's the same. When I got to China, I thought I'd try and take it to the next level, make these things you know, larger, more ambitious, some freestanding, some bracket onto the architecture, you know, these clamps and this wrench directly coupled with the building with the you know, steel tie bar, this beam. They become these sort of acrobats. They come up off the floor and interact with the space. This hammer and pickaxe are just strewn on the floor, lent against the wall. How a worker would leave them who's gone off for lunch, maybe been fired, had an injury. It's a memory of mine from when I worked on building sites. The other four are sort of journeys into my dad's garden shed in England where he has things like this gateways into sort of the idea of do-it-yourself in the domestic space and then I'm on the other side of the world in a sort of industrial environment. The entropy of work, the effort of every piece of work done by anyone, tragic, successful or failure. <laughs> 